Welcome back to another video from Chapter 5, The Internet and Its Uses. We're in Part 2, Digital Currency, and we're going to be focusing today on the blockchain. This is for the IGCSE and O-Level Cambridge Computer Science Qualification from 23 to 2025. We need to understand the process of blockchain and how it is used to track digital currency transactions. So let us begin. What is blockchain exactly? I'm sure you've heard of the term blockchain. It's one of the biggest buzzwords of today, and it's considered one of the most promising emerging technologies. It's a technology that has the potential to transform business and money as we know it. But what is it? Well, um, it's considered to be a decentralized database. That means there's no centralized control, a little bit like um, banking and when we talked about um, digital currency and cryptocurrency. With a growing list of data blocks, the chains get bigger and bigger and bigger. It is basically a, a large digital ledger, like a spreadsheet, for recording information in a way that makes it difficult or impossible to change, hack, or cheat the system. So let's start by looking at what is a block. Whenever a new transaction takes place, a new block is created. The block contains data relating to the sender and the recipient and the amount of money and the currency used for that transaction to be completed. It also contains a timestamp, also known as a hash. This is a unique identifier generated by a um, cryptographic algorithm. Okay, highly protective, um, also known as the SHA-256, which acts like a, a digital fingerprint for that particular block, making it unique. It also contains other information, such as um, the ash value of the previous block in the chain, hence the name blockchain. So all of these are connected together to give us one big chain of transactions. With each one talking and identifying the previous block in the chain, which, makes it, which would make it very, very difficult for anybody to um, attempt to hack it. This transaction block is then added to the existing blockchain and all the um, corresponding numbers relate to the previous blocks. Um, coincidentally, the first block in a blockchain is known as the Genesis block, and of course that won't have a previous number. This method of data storage is called non-destructive meaning all data never gets erased or overwritten. More blocks just keep getting added to the blockchain. In fact, one of the things that makes blockchain so powerful is its distributive nature. In blockchain technology, a network of independent computers scattered all across the globe maintain a list of data transactions, allowing them to be validated um, and checked. For example, Whenever a new transaction takes place, all the network computers get a copy of the transaction. Therefore, it cannot be changed without the consent of all the network members, all the people with the computers. This effectively removes the risk of security issues such as hacking. Each block in the chain contains transactions, and every time a new transaction occurs on the blockchain, a record of that transaction is added to every participant's ledger. The centralized um, database managed by multiple participants is known as Distributed Ledger Technology, or DLT, another acronym there. So what's it used for? Well, we've got um, blockchains that are used for land records, if somebody wants to buy a house. Voting records are kept on a blockchain to make, so there's no tampering, so it's all fair and legit when we're voting in a new president or somebody in power. Medical records need to be unique because they are part of who you are and, um, and, and of, course, of course your condition. And then of course we've got this, um, new technologies and smart contracts. So to recap, so when a new transaction is requested and authenticated, a new block has been created. This contains the data for that particular transaction. The block is sent to every node, every computer, all around the world in this particular blockchain network. The nodes, the computers, the users validate whether or not the transaction is secure, whether it's correct. Um, this takes a little bit of time and this is this is due to the, um, the crypto miners. You may have heard of crypto miners and they, um, they do complex calculations in order to ensure 
that everything is above board. Now these nodes, these computers receive a reward um, which is called a proof of work and this is typically in cryptocurrency depending on, on which blockchain we're using. Once everything is, is true and everything's validated then the block is added to the existing blockchain. All of the ledgers are updated and distributed across the network and the transaction is completely complete. So what is the future of blockchain? This new technology is transforming industries in a variety of ways. It provides an automated process for business transactions and financial record keeping. This provides a cheaper and faster solution that is very attractive for banks and businesses. As this new technology becomes more prevalent and advancements are made, many changes are coming for business and our way of life. For example, governments and cryptocurrency. It is likely that governments will eventually move from fiat currency um, to um, cryptocurrency for a number of reasons. Cryptocurrency is more traceable, has reduced settlement times and is overall more effective. Like fiat currency, cryptocurrency can also be backed by real assets and its price can be manipulated through various controls. This is not unlike the practice of printing more money to deflate the value of the dollar, for example. The, there could be um, a greater transparency between businesses and industries. In the future, or very near future, there is likely to be a single blockchain that is shared between various industries. Having a single system will make it easier and more accessible to the public and provide greater transparency as well as trusted security. Um, a big problem at, the, at this moment in time, digital identities, especially in um, maybe um, For example, governments and cryptocurrency. It is likely that governments will eventually move from fiat currency, um, notes, coins, to um, cryptocurrency for a number of reasons. Cryptocurrency is more traceable, has reduced settlement times, and is overall more effective. Like fiat currency, cryptocurrency can also be backed by real assets, and its price can be manipulated through various controls. This is not unlike the practice of printing more money to deflate the value of the dollar, for example. The, there could be um, a greater transparency between businesses and industries. In the future, or very near future, there is likely to be a single blockchain that is shared between various industries. Having a single system will make it easier and more accessible to the public and provide greater transparency as well as, tr as, well as trusted security. Um, a big problem at, the, at this moment in time, digital identities, especially in maybe poorer countries. Identity systems are currently flawed in many ways, but blockchain systems can provide a single source to verify identities and assets. Blockchain identity could also offer a type of self-sovereignty that hasn't existed before. According to statistics, nearly 1.5 billion people throughout developing nations have, an, have inadequate means of providing their own identity. An international blockchain identification platform could offer um, disenfranchised individuals the ability to access legal documentation and the privileges that come with this. And finally, the world economy. International trade is, something, is sometimes an inefficient and dysfunctional process that slows down commerce and stops trade between nations. International trade is also fraught with fraud, counterfeiting, corrupt politics and many errors. But, again, with cryptocurrency, many of these problems could vanish by unifying methods of payment, paperwork, and regulation through a single digital international system. Much of the fraud and the inefficiency can be eliminated. This should increase international commerce and provide greater trust between nations. All of this is possible and all of this is on the horizon. That is it in terms of digital currency and the blockchain. I hope you've enjoyed that and got something out of it. Next time we'll move on to cybersecurity. So please hit the like button, hit subscribe and notifications and I will let you know as soon as the next videos are released. Thank you very much indeed. Bye until next